Hey guys, I want to talk about the trade exploit and explain it a little bit. There's been some confusion on Discord, in my DMs, and in comments about how it works or why it works. And sometimes it doesn't work or it doesn't work for me right now or it doesn't always work. Why is that? So questions like that, I want to answer those. Basically the how this works and why it works. I'm going to break this down so you have a complete understanding of it. So if it's not working, you'll know why it's not working and can fix it. One thing before we start, there was a bug on console where this didn't work, where, well, it stopped working. It was working and then it suddenly stopped working. So there's some bug in the, the way the game caches data. That's really not important. If you save the game and reload that save, it'll start working again. So if you're on console and this trade exploit is not working, try that. Save your game and reload that save. For everyone else that didn't have that problem, if you do it correctly, it will work every single time. So two reasons why this works. The first reason this works is that all of the crafting materials are connected under the hood. There's something the game calls an item category. And that item category is called iron. And all of these goods, as well as the iron ore, which I don't see here, um, it, they're all connected together. So the value, this far right column, the value of all of them is determined by the demand for just one of them. So if there is a demand for iron in this town, which I don't think there is, then this value right here would be high for all of these. Well, as high as it can be for each of these. You understand that crude iron has a base value that's lower than wrought iron, and wrought iron has a base value lower than iron, and so on. So these values are going to be relatively the same depending on which town you're in. But they'll always stay that same ratio or that same distance apart in every single town on the entire map because there's a base of value that the demand in the town modifies. So when I say these things are connected, what I mean is the demand for one of these affects the demand for all of them. You can see as I start selling these, the value goes down for the other crafting materials. In fact, if I just do it like this, you can see it goes down as I sell these. So that's how, when I say they're connected, that's what I mean. So the price of one affects the others. So that's the first reason why this exploit is going to work. The second reason is that each of the transactions that appear down here are handled separately. So as soon as you queue up one of these transactions, like if I sell this for 90 here, it will always stay 90 on here. So if I queue something else up to sell, still have that selling for 90, even though it's no longer worth 90, that'll still be 90. If I go buy something here, still 90, 55, these things are going to be the same. Now, if I add more to that individual line item, like the Themyscene Steel, it'll go from 90 to probably, it'll drop the average down. Sell three, four, five of them. So now the average is less than 80 each. Now, if I remove some of those from this line item, it, again, it affects these. See, now it's back up to 90. But that that line item is always going to remain for Thamaskeen Steel. And that line item is not affected by other line items. So let me reset this. If I queue up all of the Thamaskeen Steel for sale, it sells for 774. That's what I'm going to make on it. Okay. But that's because I sold this first. If I queue up all of the other materials first and then try to sell all of these. Now look at the line item for Damascene Steel. 225 versus 774. 
that's a huge difference. The order that you're selling these things matters, especially if they're connected, like these iron materials are all, these crafting materials are all connected. So we're gonna use this to our advantage. So if there were something over here, let's, you know, let's just sell the Thamaskeen steel and come back. So now we have nine Thamaskeen steel here. Now, if I queue this up to buy it, it's gonna cost me 842. 842 to buy it. We don't want that. If we queue up, say, these guys here to sell. Now when we queue up the Thamaskeen steel, now the Thamaskeen steel says 243. That's a huge difference. But now if we come down here and we say, I don't want to sell these three things anymore. Notice that the Thamaskeen steel doesn't change. It's still 243. Remember, it was 842, huge difference. So when we go to buy things, where we wanna buy some of these crafting materials cheaper, we can pretend to sell all of these other crafting materials first, buy these guys, you can see that it's 243 now. Take all these things back. Now look, I'm only spending 243 on these. This is how this works. You're, you're using crafting materials to lower the price of the thing you're gonna buy by pretending to sell them. You're creating a transaction by doing, by saying, I wanna sell all these. That's creating a transaction. It doesn't, doesn't work until I click done. Right now I said I wanna sell these, but because fine steel is connected to Thamaskeen steel, under the hood, if I go to buy this, it now says it's worth 274 instead of 800 and whatever it was before. And I can undo this, removing that transaction. See? So this is how the exploit works. The, the why, the reason why it works is because they're connected and because these, these transactions in this queue don't change. They change individually, like for fine steel. Right now it's plus 50. If I sell another one, still at 50. Now it's dropping down into 49. You can see this is what I'm selling it for. 48 now. So it's this changes for this one line item for the one thing that I'm buying, which is fine steel or charcoal or hardwood or grain or any other item on here. So that's why it works. The how it works is us reducing the price. Now, you hear me say that a lot uh, in some of the other videos that I made. Reduce the price of the crafting materials first. What I mean by that is exactly this. Instead of me buying this Thamaskeen steel for 842, I'm gonna pretend to sell all of these other materials first, then buy that, undo all of these. So now I'm buying it for 243. This is what I mean by reducing the price. You've, you're buying it at a lower price so that when you sell it for a higher price later, you get more trade XP than you would. You get more profit, which equates to more trade XP. So let's buy this. And I don't have, the prices aren't marked yet. Let's go in here and do this and this so that they'll be marked there that works a little better so now you see this is green because i bought it really cheap okay now i can do that with these other materials as well like i can sell all of these first doesn't matter what i sell them for what it matters is what i buy them for so before i buy this fine steel i'm going to sell all of the other crafting materials that i have or at least pretend to sell them. Now this fine steel has dropped way down in price to 7,939. So just under 8,000. Now I buy them. When I come back in here, this is now green. 
Well, what happens when I try to sell all these? Remember, I bought them for just under 8,000. I'm selling them now for over 12,000. This is the, the trade exploit. You're able to now sell those same things that you just bought real cheap for more money. So I could stand here in this one town, sell these for a high price, come back in here, pretend to sell all of these materials and buy back these seeds for under 8,000. I sold them for over 12,000. So this is the trade exploit. Now, so this works with any items that are connected. For example, the hardwood and the charcoal are connected as well. Hardwood, charcoal. You can see the value is 10 and 21. So if I start selling these, these charcoal, you'll see that the price of the hardwood goes down as well. So these two items are connected to each other. So you can do this same exploit with that. Uh, one thing you can do um, that I, I often do is when I go to buy hardwood, if I'm doing smithing or something and I go to buy hardwood, I'll always pretend to sell all the charcoal first. That'll reduce the price of the hardwood that I'm buying. Even if it's one or two gold, I'm still dropping the price, making it cheaper. Then, of course, I'm not actually going to sell the charcoal. I take, I undo that transaction and end up with the hardwood at a cheaper price. So it works crafting materials, hardwood charcoal, and it also works with horses. There's three, well, four categories of horses, technically. Uh, there is a, a noble mount. You can see at the bottom, noble mount. Noble mounts are fixed buying and selling prices. So this will never work with noble mounts. Every town you go into, I think within a few dinars, every price, every selling price and buying price is exactly the same. You'll never be able to make a profit selling noble mounts. And when I say make a profit, I mean you won't be able to buy them cheap and sell them high. It doesn't work with those. But the rest of these, it will. For example, the the war horses. And again, these, these two right here are war horses. These are normal mounts and these are pack animals. So if, if I start selling these, you'll notice that all the other war horses that I have, which is just the other one, the value goes down as well. So let's say, I well, don't have any horses here to buy. I was going to say, I could show you how to reduce that. So you could reduce this since I have um, horses here. Let's, let's just leave here and let's just jump over here and see. Okay, you have horses. Perfect. So for example, we have a, here's a war horse right here that I don't have. And this works best with ones that you don't have. So right now they're selling for a thousand twenty-five. If I bought all of them, it would be eighty-five hundred and change. I don't want that. That's too high. So if I do this and then go after those, and I got to make sure I I only take back what I tried. Yeah, there we go. So now it's five thousand is the new price for all eight of those. It was 8,000, right? Yeah, it was over 8,500. I dropped it down by 3,000 just by pretending to sell these horses. You can do the same thing with the regular mounts for these other things, these other regular mounts that are over here, these two guys, and with these guys. You'll see that as I start selling these, the mule goes down as well. So this works with these. The problem with doing this trade exploit with um, with horses is that they quote unquote fixed it. Tail Worlds fixed it. What they did was they put an artificial trade penalty for horses in the mix. So if you're selling horses or buying horses, there's uh, an, an extra added trade penalty so that you can't do horse trading very easily. Like you're not, it's not going to be as profitable as it was before. They've, I think the, I don't remember the exact number. I think it's 80% difference now. Like before where you were making hundreds, now you're only going to get about 80% of that. So that's why you don't see us doing horse trading anymore because it's, it's really difficult to do. 
Now you can do this trade exploit if you have a lot of horses. I'm talking hundreds or even thousands of horses, then yes, you can do this trade exploit the same way we do the, the crafting material exploit. So that'll work. So I mentioned um, a moment ago about the, um, the experience gained from this. Um, the actual number for that is you get one XP for every two dinars of, of profit that you make on your sale. So we all know you have to buy low and sell high and to make a profit. So using this, you're reducing the price of these materials way down at its lowest. You want to get it as low as you possibly can so that when you sell it in another town for as high as you possibly can, you're going to make the most money. You want the biggest difference between the buying and selling price to get more XP out of this. So now let's talk about how the caravan exploit works. When I buy and sell any goods in a town, the, the price fluctuates. There's a, a demand calculation based on supply and demand within this town. So for example, you know, there's no grain in here, there's wood. So there's already some wood in this town. So they don't want a lot of money for the wood because they already have some. Okay, if I sell them more, the price or the value goes down if I sell them a bunch of wood. So now they're, they're only interested in paying 13 for it. They were interested in paying 29 before. So this is the demand, okay? So in a town, that demand changes on the fly with each item that you sell. It may not change it significantly. In some cases it does, some cases it doesn't. Like with, with grain, if you start selling grain, you won't, um, well, not in this town. This town, <laughs> grain is really high, 34, that's crazy. Um, in most towns, grain has a low price and you have to sell a lot of it just to change the value by one, by one dinar. So the supply that they have is calculated into the value for the demand of that, that item. And it's a huge calculation. I can cover that in another video. But the towns themselves control that supply and demand. Villages that are bound to the town use the same demand as the town does. Like the town controls the demand for the villages that are bound to it. Even trade-bound villages from the castles that are trade-bound, those are controlled by the town that they're delivering their goods to. So the other thing is caravans. Caravans get their prices from whatever town they're closest to. So if they're closest to this town, they're going to get their demand from this town. So if I go to sell, say, Famiskeen Steel to a caravan, it's going to be similar to this demand. It's going to be lower than this because they have a, a trade penalty for caravans. This is a separate one for caravans, which reduces the selling price and increases the buying price for everything on a caravan. It's really hard to, to make a profit from buying stuff from caravans and selling it back to them. Although, although, I haven't tested it yet. But if a caravan is near a town where the value of some item is at its lowest and you buy the good from that caravan, then you follow that caravan to another town where the value of that good is really high and sell that same good that you just bought from that caravan a few towns back, sell it back to that caravan at a profit. I haven't tested that yet, but I, I think it's it might be possible. I'm not sure if they added code to make that impossible or, or if that caravan trade penalty takes that into account and makes that impossible. I haven't tested that yet. So the since the price of items, trade goods, is determined by a town, even for caravans, when you do trading with a caravan, if you pop back into town and dump some crafting materials there that lowers the demand for crafting materials, then you talk to the caravan again. Now they're asking for less money for those same trade goods you just sold them. This is why that trade, the, why the caravan exploit works the way it does. Because it uses the town's demand, so you can manipulate the price. Because remember, the caravan price doesn't go down for each individual item that you sell. When you sell each one of these things, the price stays the same the whole time. So you need to manipulate it using an, an outside force, which is the town's demand. So that's where you see Anytime someone is doing the caravan exploit and they're sitting just outside of a town, it's so that that caravan uses this town's demand 
and they can quickly go from the caravan to the town to reduce the value of it so that they go back to the caravan and buy those materials back at a cheaper price and then go back into the town, buy that stuff back, then go pop back out to the caravan and sell the stuff again. So that's, that's why the caravan exploit works. Because it's values, the values of the items are based on the town that you're near, and if you change that demand within the town, it affects the caravan. So that's it. If this is still not clear to you, if you still have questions about this, drop them in the comments here. You can reach out to me on Discord, and I'll try to answer them. I think I covered everything again a little... I don't know if I've, I've covered it more clearly or not, but if, again, if you have questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Peace out.